Hello and welcome to episode number 20, Real Talk with a Unicorn. My name is Tatiana and I'm recruiter in supply chain and logistics unicorn expert. This episode will be different from previous ones because I will be the one answering questions. I gave free pass to a job seeker, Akash Salva, to ask me anything he wants, which of course makes me feel nervous, but at the same time <laughs> excited about the authenticity of this experiment of that of this experience uh, so akash is a job seeker at the moment akash is a supply chain analyst who is currently working in the retail store in the retail environment akash is also an international student who graduated from seneca who graduated from humber so let's see what questions he has for me and i'm sure that some of those questions will be the ones that you wanted to ask so let's start akash <laughs> Thank you so much for having me here. It's a pleasure being here and uh, helping out students and job seekers. So thank you so much for having me here. You're welcome. So I'll, I'll start with the first question. <clears throat> so um, while we network on LinkedIn, while the job seeker networks on LinkedIn, there are a lot of um, questions or doubts with your students like me. Uh, mm -hmm. Whom should we reach out to in the chain of hierarchy in the company? Is the recruiter, the HR, the supply chain or manager or the CEO of the company? The reason for asking this question is because I've heard a lot of uh, professionals ask, uh, talk about saying they've directly uh, spoken with the CEO or the director of the company and they've got through. So uh, if you can share some light on this topic, that'll be great. Okay, guys, that's great. And you know that networking is probably the only way to navigate hidden job market as well, especially if you're looking for co-op opportunities, they don't usually get advertised. So that's a great question because I, my answer would be network with um, professionals who are in supply chain, who work in the same industry where your strengths are, where you want to work. And I would recommend connecting with your potential peers because I see a trend that companies this day, they, they give financial incentives to their employees for referrals. And I personally, as a recruiter, had uh, multiple examples when someone reaches out to me asking for a job for their friend or networking on behalf of their friend or just basically having a conversation. So be someone who others will want to recommend. And that recommendation may come from your peers. So for example, in your case, if you are a supply chain analyst, replenishment analyst, connecting with um, professionals who have have the same this role at the moment will also be strategically right and especially connecting with those professionals who work for companies where you want to work as well as far as uh, decision makers of course uh, connect with someone who can potentially be your hiring manager because you don't really ask for a job right away because technically nobody owes you a job but being staying connected with these people will uh, give you exposure to their activity. You will see what they talk about. You will be, you will have access to the most recent company updates. And oftentimes you will see hiring manager posting on LinkedIn that they are looking to expand their team. So that may be strategically right. Also, I noticed that if someone is just starting the job search and they don't really have a lot of connections in Canada, they may also want to connect with industry influencers, with recruiters, because by having connections uh, who are very well connected, so uh, you will get uh, visibility to more people in the industry, because how often you find out, um, I don't know, supply chain manager, and it says that this person you cannot see, you cannot um, read their profile because they are out of your network reach. So definitely connect with those who are well connected, which oftentimes are recruiters. And uh, yes, networking on LinkedIn, of course, in this online world, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of opportunities to meet people in person. That's why LinkedIn is the tool that we use. <laughs> And actually, right now we are having this conversation because you approached me, right? You supported the posts online, and uh, I was interested in speaking with you uh, because you post uh, advice for job seekers. So that the result of networking, of course. So it's all about building relationships, I believe. Exactly. Yes, because you may not benefit from your networking right away, but you right. do need people, and you also want to be someone who they will want to recommend. 
great. That's a great reply. So um, when a job seeker applies for a job, they usually target job boards like Indeed, LinkedIn, or the career website of a particular company. So while applying, <clears throat> should they network with those specific professionals in the company before applying or after applying? And uh, by connecting, I mean knowing more about the role, not uh, asking for a job. Like mm -hmm. knowing more about the role and you know asking role specific questions. So should it uh, usually be before applying to a particular position or after? Okay, so um, that's that's a great question, and I can see why you're asking that because. Uh, you may think that uh, if this job is open, then the hiring manager is probably urgently, uh, the hiring manager probably urgently wants to fill this role, but filling this role is not the only thing on their mind. They have tons of issues that they're dealing with, especially if you are talking about supply chain managers. They have trade forwarders to discuss rates with, they have suppliers globally to deal with. So your message may come across as something that they don't have time to respond, especially if they need to type and they need to give you a de detailed answer. So when you approach them without applying prior to that, I can guarantee the answer would be apply to the job posting. They won't even tell you anything about the role, they will redirect you to that ap application, to the portal. Um, so um, again, if we are talking about referrals, uh, if you know someone who works for this company, you've been in touch with this person prior to the day when you saw the application, then it makes sense to give this person a chance to present you before applying. So it really depends. If you don't know this person, then better apply first and then follow up later. Or if you know this person, if you have really good connection in place, if you've been in touch a few times and then you see that their company is hiring, then approaching this person will definitely uh, be a story. But again, don't wait too long if they do not respond to you. Uh, of course, after a couple of days, I highly recommend applying online. Applying online does work if the role is uh, suitable, if your resume definitely shows that you have value for this company. That's a fantastic reply. <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad. So, so far it's going good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. So um, now um, my question is more towards uh, tailoring the resume. So I've come across jobs, um, say they have like 10 responsibilities, 12, 15. Mm -hmm. And uh, say um, if I'm tailoring a resume according to a job position, usually we keep four to seven bullet points in per pro um, in the per profile uh, in our resume. So now when you want to demonstrate that you've done these uh, you've done the responsibilities mentioned, but you there there will be a chance when you know you cannot demonstrate everything. Now picking the uh, responsibilities which will impact the most or which will grab the most attention of the recruiter. How does a job seeker decide that? Like, what should what should a strategy be? Mm -hmm. And um, in same, yeah. Okay, gosh, so, that's that's a great question. I'm 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 a recruiter who advocates for um, the minimum amount of tailoring. Uh, so before applying online, I advise everyone to take some time and think strategically. Identify the area of business, the area of supply chain that you really want to, um, to grow in. Maybe this area corresponds with your most recent experience. Maybe this industry reflects um, your passion. So find something that makes sense for you. In your case, for example, I would limit my search to replenishment analyst, supply chain coordinator, supply chain analyst, um, or maybe purchasing analyst, retail, um, retail specialist. So definitely identify the, the list of titles that makes sense for you to apply, which means you may also try demand planner. So identify that area and read job descriptions carefully before you start working on your resume. And you will see how, uh, these job descriptions 
have a lot in common. You can even see patterns that get carried over from one job description into another. So you can get a sense of keywords, for example, in your case, that would be replenishment, planogram, SNOP, forecast accuracy, um, I don't know, maybe inventory management strategies like ABC inventory management strategy. So that needs to be on your resume. So once you identify the keywords that are specific to your niche, once you identify the titles that are specific to your background and to your area of interest, go to your resume and make sure that every single bullet point and having six and seven is decent, uh, having more may be a little bit too much, but make sure you use powerful words to describe your previous experience and incorporate those keywords into each bullet point. Also, that's my personal recommendation. Use, um, for example, if you want to communicate your previous achievement, there are different ways of saying it. For example, you can say um, achieved 95% forecast accuracy by effectively collaborating with internal stakeholders, maybe sales team marketing. Or you can say things like collaborated with other departments to ensure inventory availability. Both sentences relatively say the same, but the first one is more powerful because you start the sentence with your achievement. I achieved 95% forecast accuracy. Because a lot of people, and that's in our human nature, we read from top to bottom, from left to right. And oftentimes they don't have enough um, time <laughs> to read the entire sentence from left to right. So they will be more screening through it achieved, improved, implemented, um, I don't know, collaborated, led, introduced. So use those powerful words. And then once you've done this work, which may take two days, three days, after that, your application should be pretty much streamlined. That's when you won't need to tailor your resume uh, by much. And so I would recommend invest some time in the very beginning, think about your strategy, Think about roles that make sense and give yourself some time. Give yourself a couple of days to complete that. Don't set unrealistic expectations because you have enough stress already. Uh, set smaller goals, achieve them and be proud of yourself. Because also the reason we are having this conversation is because there are job seekers out there who see that those success stories and sometimes they may be intimidated. They may start questioning their role Hmm. ability to find job and we are here right. today to address those questions that's why i want you to ask questions so <laughs> <laughs> right it's more of like people see the success stories and you know they feel a bit demotivated as to why things are not working towards the end but right i think hard work every day each day will work for them and me, of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. And, and I like what you do for job seekers. For example, right now, Akash, you are looking for work yourself. And right. going through that experience firsthand, you share it online so others can see. And I see how supported you are. That's amazing because people often think that in order for them to help others, they have to have a lot on hand. But sometimes you can help others without having too much because your experience alone can be valuable. And you know, if, if you can recommend someone for a job that you would want to have yourself, but for some reason you are not a match for this role, still do it. I mean, help others, even if it means that you won't be the one selected and your friend will be. It's life and it's long life. <laughs> so, don't so, be like, you know, yeah. <laughs> With the perspective <laughs> <laughs> so um basically stating the facts and figures which are impactful will really help the job seekers um, in their search right yes As, uh, mm -hmm. mentioned so um i have this uh, question um while applying for jobs say um there are postings on wednesday or thursday specifically and there have been some postings uh, which have filled in like four days, three days. Some take, some have a deadline. So, is there a particular time of the day? Like, uh, is there a particular duration where job seekers should apply? Say, 
Monday to Wednesday or so Tuesday to you know Thursday in the evening or in the afternoon because uh, it's my personal thought that uh, if I apply on Friday and say they might uh, res- uh, review the resumes next week, say Monday or Tuesday, there are chances that my resume would you know pile up and um, you know um, go back. So is there something, uh, is there a particular time uh, uh, to ap- apply? Uh, the algorithms. Well, my answer would be no. I wouldn't recommend that because it's too comp. Like if if you start keeping all those things in mind, uh, I I mean I'm I don't think I'm capable <laughs> of keeping this many things in mind. Right. I suggest the the moment you see the position, apply for it. Okay. That's why having the right resume is crucial because if you think that you need to tailor your resume every time, if the jobs you are applying to are so different from one another, you keep postponing it. Okay, once I get to my desk, once I get home, I'll tailor my resume. So streamline your application process as much as possible, make it efficient so that um, at least you apply the moment you see the, the job. Personally, as a recruiter, sometimes I post jobs. Honestly, I don't really have any logic behind them. The moment I get a job, I post it. Oftentimes, I don't post. Um, Sometimes I don't even post on my website for various reasons, because the search may be confidential, or um, I may not, I may be specifically recruiting from certain industries and companies and I want to limit my search. That's why it's a great idea to follow up with recruiters or hiring managers from time to time to see what they have because there are a couple of jobs that I'm not advertising at the moment, but I'm actively working on them. So also I would, yes, I would say, no, I wouldn't, I I wouldn't overthink it uh, because every recruiter every talent acquisition specialist is different every case is so unique and if you start thinking of about what they are thinking without even it's too much <laughs> <laughs> all right Let, right so um since you mentioned about the job hidden job market mm-hmm. i would want to um, like emphasis on that and i would want to know more about the approaches towards the hidden job market it, there's mm-hmm. a lot of emphasis on that and you know, there are different strategies. There are a lot of people talking about it on LinkedIn every day. And there's just too much information, right? Okay. So, uh-huh. uh, of course, each strategy is different and it works differently for an individual. But um, I would want to know from you, what is the hidden market and how can a job seeker approach it? What should be the strategy? Like, Okay, so that's, that's a great question. And I will try to sim- simplify it for you so that the hidden job market becomes clear and the, the ways to navigate it are um, that you know them. So the hidden job market, what it is, jobs that exist, but those but jobs that are not advertised. So the only way to learn about those jobs is to by networking, by talking to people. So networking is the only way, as I see it, to navigate the hidden job market. And also not just networking, but also making sure that your profile on LinkedIn looks decent, that your resume is perfect. And people who know you speak highly of you. People who know you are willing to recommend you, which means every single communication, every single conversation should be done with respect to other people's boundaries, time, availability. Uh, Even if this conversation, as you may think, won't make sense going forward, you never know. I can give you a couple of, but more than a couple of examples, how hidden job market, how I was basically, like how I had confidential jobs that I ended up filling because someone had, uh, was uh, networking with me. So I had a job which, um, uh, which I, I think I advertised, but uh, the person reached out to me and she was not suitable for the job and she recommended her friend. Her friend, would never know about this job because I did not use the job board to advertise. But for her to recommend her friend, those relationships had to be good relationship. Right. Or for example, I had someone who reached out to me asking if I have anything in logistics 
because that person was asking on behalf of her friend who she really wanted to help. And I said, I don't have anything in logistics at the moment, but I have something that fits you. Will you be interested? And turned out that she was interested. So, and there is another example, someone on LinkedIn who had a great profile, a great background approached me in April and we exchanged emails. I received her resume and saved it into my database. But after that connection in April, she was supporting me on LinkedIn from time to time, maybe putting likes on my posts or commenting. And I had a feeling that I already, I, I knew that person because I saw what type of posts she was liking. So I had an idea of her values and her leadership approach. So basically your activity on LinkedIn um, gives other people idea of what you value, what you want, what you respect. So be very mindful what you say, what you post and what uh, what you uh, support. So definitely I, when I, when I came across her resume, because I had a job and I was browsing through my database, I called her right away and she's currently in that job. <laughs> so I feel the So again, that was done through networking, but at the moment when she was networking with me, I did not have a role. And uh, this is something that people anticipate networking to bring fast results. In fact, it is a slow process. Oh. The process that requires building connections. And of course, how do you start? You connect with people on LinkedIn. You, for example, you identify the industry. In your case, it may be food manufacturing or retail. Google companies that specialize in those industries and then connect with supply chain managers or supply chain people on LinkedIn by sending a brief message saying, I would like to connect with you and learn from your experience and stay in touch. And uh, every relationship has to develop gradually. That's right. the law. <laughs> you can't really, um, that's how I see it. And, uh, and that's, that's my advice. I think uh, networking and networking by supporting others. Because when you approach people, oftentimes, you may be the, the one who can help them. So always keep that in mind. It's this give and take balance is essential. That's lovely. It's a slow process. It's a slow process and it's, it, it boils down to networking. And you crack hidden job market by, de by being a decent human being. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, as we talk about LinkedIn and um, how you display a self on LinkedIn professionally. How, um, my question is regarding a LinkedIn profile, especially the heading and the introduction. Mm -hmm. How uh, much weightage does that carry? Like um, people say that you put in keywords, uh, you put in words which, uh, which you are inclined towards, uh, industries you are inclined towards working in. Mm -hmm. and also the introduction, your summary, how can you make it impactful and how important it is? Like what is the weightage it holds on a profile? Say um, a recruiter mm -hmm. looks for a, a particular pro, uh, person, an individual professional in, on LinkedIn. So how do you, um, you know, uh, cater your resume, uh, sorry, your LinkedIn profile, mm -hmm. the, uh, mm -hmm. your um, summary? Okay, that's that's a great question, Akash. And uh, it may probably sound like we've been prepping it. No, in fact, you're asking all the questions that I hear from other people. That's why I decided to have uh, this conversation. Uh, I would start with your headline and emphasize it because when you like other people's posts, when you comment on other people's posts, what others can see is your picture and your headline. So your headline should be very clear and clean and ideally it should reflect the job title that you have or in your case if you are currently doing the job that can be classified as survival job put a title that you want for example supply chain analyst and then you can specify retail food manufacturing that's it because your headline should be clear enough uh, for others to have an idea of what you do and for example if you like someone posts and other people are browsing through it and see who's also there. 
And if let's say the hiring manager is looking through that list, by looking at your headline, he or she may be tempted to click on your profile and see what's there. So once they get on your profile, uh, your about section becomes the, the key point of reference because that's where you can demonstrate your written communication skills. And when you mentioned keywords, I would, I would not start it by what words I need to use. I would okay. start it by what do I want to tell people about myself? and use keywords to communicate that. So not keywords for the sake of keywords. You want to make sure that you come across as a, as a whole. You want to make sure that your first three lines are the most powerful because that's what we see uh, at first, unless we want to read more and we click on that read more, if I'm not mistaken. So in those three lines, what I would love to, to see, to hear is, uh, for example, after I graduated from certain college in certain year or after I graduated from this supply chain program, I started working in supply chain and I've been doing global logistics or supply chain planning for this many years. So you have to uh, present your journey within a couple of sentences, what you have done. So, or maybe you can specify the industries or you can specify something like, I, I graduated as an industrial engineer, but since 2014, I've been focused on supply chain management, taking care of demand and planning and right. then in certain industries. So you address your message right away where your strengths are you have to make sure you showcase your strengths which may be experience industries or um, years of experience or education so the next paragraph is uh, should reflect and, and i'm talking like three four sentences per paragraph okay. not long so the second paragraph uh, should address um, uh, more of what you have achieved and how you achieved it it should give me an idea of your values together with your ability to work. So for example, if you, if you are a dedicated person, if you worked for an employer for 10 years, I would suggest bring it up. I worked for one company for 10 years. I demonstrated my loyalty and that's who I am. Um, I practice integrity and avoid being generic because I see about sections that after, even after reading the whole thing, I still don't know who's in front of me. So collaborate your unique uh, strength, like your values with your unique achievements. And in the third paragraph, um, address what you want to do. My career goal is to manage a larger team or my career goal is to uh, pursue an opportunity in pharmaceutical industry because I believe that by working there, I can make a difference in other people's lives. So always have this um, bigger idea or bigger why blended in with your experience and with your values. And that may also take a day or two to, to write. And uh, I would recommend ask your friends and say, what do you think I do? after reading this bio, maybe even ask your neighbors or people who have no idea you're in supply chain and they'll tell you, I don't know, what is it? No idea. <laughs> well, maybe they can tell you something that is not what you want other people to see. Maybe they can tell you uh, that you, you want to grow in your house operations and retail management and you would be like, no, I want to be a supply chain analyst. So those things have to be addressed once again your strengths, showcase them right away, uh, then your achievements blended with your values, and the third paragraph, what you want and why. And then uh, going back to the work experience, um, I'm just trying to picture a typical LinkedIn profile. Going back to your work experience, those bullet points from your resume, the ones that you are comfortable sharing, because some companies, some people put, especially in management position, they put numerical achievements, the size of the, 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 the budget and their scope of responsibility. So filter it out, make sure you put something that you would want and would be okay for others to see and definitely put those bullet points and especially if they have keywords, that's important. And, and uh, one important thing, uh, another important thing is also make sure the industry that you belong to on LinkedIn is relevant to the industry where you want to work because oftentimes recruiters filter by what industry they want to hunt, hunt, hunt people from. And if let's say you are in retail right now, but for some reason the LinkedIn profile says 
I don't know, engineering. You won't right. jump on their searches if they use industry as their parameter for filtering, which I often do. But, uh, but at the same time, when I think that I don't see enough traction, I don't filter by industry. But again, you cannot make sure all information is accurate. Right. <laughs> well, gosh, was that helpful? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was lovely. So basically, you just need to keep it short, sweet, and impactful. Powerful, yes, powerful, powerful and uh, practice integrity. If in your about section you address values or leadership characteristics that you value in others or that you, you describe yourself as a certain type of leader, when you make sure you support others on LinkedIn, that you are generous and that you, when you post content, that content is in line with your values because right. integrity is important for any business. And that's, that's, that's lovely, that's, that's amazing. Thanks. Thanks. So um, any uh, valuable advice to the job seekers currently seeking mm -hmm. anything you would want to add if I've not covered my questions, that'd be great. Yes, that's great. I would, I would want to cover uh, the part that would, I would call job seeker KPIs. Uh, set yourself uh, daily goals. Maybe right. you want to apply to at least 10 jobs a day, or you want to connect with maybe at least 10 or 15 people in your niche in the industry. So set those numerical KPIs for every day and keep yourself accountable because you cannot control how often other people respond. You cannot control whether or not they look at your profile, but what you can control, identify those areas that you can control and keep yourself accountable and give yourself enough time to work on the strategy. So give yourself enough time to, um, to assess your progress because uh, look at the bottlenecks. If you apply for jobs, but you don't get any response back, then maybe something is wrong with your resume or maybe something is wrong with the jobs that you are applying for maybe they're too senior for you or they have nothing to do with your previous experience in education if you right. apply for jobs you get invited to the first or second interview but you don't make it further then maybe it's time to focus on your interview skills learn some information online connect with people and maybe ask for feedback when possible when you follow up on those interviews so take time to assess your uh, journey uh, looking for a job is a full-time job it's unpaid exhausting full-time job and everybody's going through that struggle but if you do not get up dress up show up uh, things won't happen on their own like you need to showcase the work and through your work ethics that's how people see for example if you make promises like i'll send you my resume tonight and you don't send it that reflects um badly on your personality, for example. So make sure you practice the values you preach and you practice uh, integrity. Again, you may not think of that as a strategically important uh, thing to look at, but recruiters, um, now hiring managers, your potential co-workers, they do look at that. They do look, uh, especially in supply chain, at your sense of urgency and that's... Uh, so that probably was a long thing, but I wanted to cover as much as I could because I know right. uh, there are professionals who are new to the country. They have other things to deal with in life with uh, expenses, bills, and uh, just not having right. family around. The support system is missing here. So I know exactly what it is to <laughs> have support right. system. That's, <laughs> That's why this I, advice is definitely going to help a lot of job seekers, I'm sure. Just keep them going. Okay, Akash, thank you so much for your time. And for everyone who is watching, please subscribe to this channel. It's Unicorn Experts channel where I post information about job search strategies, where I meet with industry leaders and we discuss supply chain. So stay curious. Um, and uh, of course, uh, you know, invest in yourself, invest in your education and network with each other.